Hello and welcome to today's devotion. We are still in the Gospel of Luke chapter 23 and today we're looking at verse 26, maybe through verse 31. We may get a little further. I'm not quite sure. We'll see where the Spirit leads us. But as such, let's pray and we'll get into it. Father, thank you for your kindness and for your faithfulness. As we go into your word, we pray that you open up our hearts and minds to hear what you have to say and speak to us in Jesus name. Amen. This is verse 26. As they led him away, they seized Simon, a Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country and laid the cross on him to carry behind Jesus. A large crowd of people followed him, including women who were mourning and lamenting him. But turning to them, Jesus said, Daughters of Jerusalem, do not weep for me, but weep for yourselves and your children. Look, the days are coming when they will say, Blessed are the women without children, the wombs that never bore, and the breasts that never nursed. Then they will begin to say to the mountains, Fall on us, and to the hills, cover us. For if they do these things when the wood is green, what will happen when it is dry? Now, here you have, it's it's a very powerful prophecy, if you will, that that Jesus says in verse 30 and 31, "Out out out of the stump, a root will take place. It's an Old Testament, I believe it's in Isaiah. Um, and it refers to that out of the stump, a, uh, it's Hosea, I take it back, um, a, 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 a shoot of Jesse will, will arise. And what he's saying is that in this context, they are mourning him, but he's drawing their attention to something even bigger. Don't weep for me, but for yourselves and for your children. Look, the days are coming when they will say, blessed are the women without children, the wombs that never bore and the breasts that never nursed. Because the world is so bad, the evil has gotten so great that it is better not to bring children into the world. Now, when you you take a look at Genesis and especially chapter one and two, the Lord as creator of everything is abundant. There is no scarcity within him at all. Created the universe and the the universe is vast. There simply is no limitations to our God. And when he blesses, he always blesses and says, be fruitful and multiply, bear fruit. Fruit means to expand, to bring more into the world, to take your nature and to expand it. If you're an apple tree and you bear fruit, you bear hundreds of apples that will continue to expand and manifest your nature. And that's what God is, the God of blessing. So God in creating humanity says, Adam and Eve will make, let us make human beings, man, in our image, as our family, in our likeness. In other words, we are his image bearers. And the blessing that God gives us is to be fruitful and take that image bearing nature and let it expand. Let it just multiply. That's the nature of God. The enemy, complete nature, he only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He was a murderer from the beginning and is a liar. In fact, he's the father of lies. And when he is allowed to reign, the evil that is manifest by his intention is such that you don't even want to bring any more human beings into the world. It is not safe. And this is something that throughout the scriptures, when Israel would suffer a great calamity, this idea of it's, it's, you just don't want to have, it's better not to have children. It will take all that you have to save yourself 
and to tend to yourself and to your own safety and to your own well-being in this time of evil. That to have uh, the responsibility for other children would just be too much. It's just too overbearing. That's how evil the time is. So what Jesus is saying is that in verse uh, 28 through 31, it is so evil. It is so bad that the uh, that death at this point is even preferable. So in verse 30, they will begin to say to the mountains, fall on us and to the hills cover us. We cannot face it. We cannot bear it. We're not, first of all, as human beings, designed in any way to be able to um, deal with evil. We can't. God can, but we can't. God banishes it evil. We can't. It takes. It overtakes us. It makes us so weak. It's a, it's a poison to our system. We can't handle it. We fall into shame, and, and ultimately, it's not uncommon to have suicidal thoughts. That's something we don't talk about. We maybe talk about mental health and talk about suicide and, um, and within those contexts. But the enemy um, will will give that idea and that thought and 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 push it and try to instill it into our minds. No matter where we are in our lives, we can have the best life going on. The enemy can find a way to work that suicidal spirit that suicidal voice into our lives for, 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 for whatever reason that he sees it might work on us. And in this case, what Jesus is saying is that things are so bad right now. This is the time of darkness that, that it will be such that we would feel that it would be better to be dead. This is, this is the dynamic that's in play. He goes on in verse 32, two others, criminals, were also led away to be executed with him. When they arrived at the place called the Skull, they crucified him there, along with the criminals, one on his right, one on the left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them because they do not know what they are doing. And they divided his clothes and cast lots. So in the midst of all this evil, Jesus is declaring the goodness and power of God, forgiveness. Forgiveness, not for the enemy, not for the devil, not for Satan, not for any of the spiritual forces working against him, but for those human beings that have been affected by it and need to be released by it. And of course, they divided his clothes. We see pictures and images of Jesus, say, on crucifixes and on the cross and in the interest of respect and dignity, they will oftentimes put a cloth around his waist. But the reality is that's not how crucifixions were, were played out. The crucifixions were a complete um, display of shame. A complete display of utter contempt and shame and, hum and um, not, not humility, but humiliating. And so they would strip them and, and expose their bodies. And it was a very long, drawn out way of death. So they were on display for, for quite a long time, a few days even. Jesus' death was, was relatively short. Um, but that's not how crucifixion normally was played out. The people stood watching in verse 35, and even the leaders were scoffing. He saved others, let him save himself. If this is God's Messiah, the chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him. They came offering him sour wine and said, if you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. It's the same mocking voice that Jesus faced when he first came out of the desert and started his ministry. If you are the son of God, Turn these stones to bread. If you are the son of God, throw yourself off this, this high point of the temple for his angels will catch you. If, you know, he goes on, but it's the same, it's the same temptation on our identity. If God loves you, 
then why this? And that same mockery that the devil used on Jesus, he tries to use us to instill doubt in God's love. To try to instill doubt in God's faithfulness. To try to instill doubt in the calling that he has on our life. If you are God's child, why is this happening to you? being able to recognize that the voice of mockery is not the voice of God is a key component in seeing how his spirit was over all of the people because they all mocked him or they accused him. They're either accusing or mocking and in each, whether it's mockery or accusatory voices, it all comes from the enemy because God never accuses he will confront for for mean or for intentions of correction, but he will never accuse with the with the intention of shaming and degrading. There's a lot to be said about this. We'll get into it later, but suffice it to say that right up until Jesus' death, the devil was doing what the devil does: mock, accuse, shame, degrade humiliate and destroy but our god is stronger we'll pick it up next time uh, with verse 38 um, until then may the peace of god be with you and may you walk in his in the knowledge of his love for you in the knowledge of his faithfulness to you and in the knowledge of your calling i'll see you next time bye-bye